Have you ever considered the lineage of thought, how our society perceives reality, or the ways we think collectively? Our thought is the summation of generations of scholars, critics, philosophers, and thinkers spanning the entire breadth of humanity. Today we live in the postmodern era of thinking. We accept certain perspectives as subjective as neither being inherently right or wrong. Life is an individual experience. Today, truth is relative, and I want to trace our lineage of thought back to a certain character, Soren Kierkegaard, the father of existentialism and of many of our perspectives in life. Existentialism is an approach on life. It details the subjective relevance of the individual and finding truth in a world seemingly absent. This may be puzzling, as Kierkegaard is a theologian, but even greater is his impartiality. In assessment of Kierkegaard, I want to explore certain parallels and to define a piece of the generational puzzle, a segment of postmodern thought, a working whole. In doing so, I've researched and assessed a number of scholarly articles from Oregon State University, Stanford University, and the Encyclopedia of Britannica, as well as uh, one of my friends who was well-educated and has studied religious structure and faith thoroughly, Megan Fansler. In addition, I have a large breadth of information concerning the topic, as I've taken many classes in philosophy and have an interest in the course myself. Kierkegaard's tale is one of renewing passions, left wasted in the events of, ex of enlightenment thinking. He wanted to reinstall a meaning to the individual, faith or otherwise, an expansion of the self. In, in doing so, I want to explore a certain chronology, spanning from the Enlightenment era, Kierkegaard's era, as well as our own destination, the postmodern era. I think many of Kierkegaard's contributions to Enlightenment thinking can be traced to our own. <coughs> Kierkegaard was born in 1813 and died in 1855, notably the Enlightenment era, an era marked by scientific thought, ingenuity, a period starting with the technologies expanded from Great Britain throughout the world, the Industrial Revolution, 1750. This was a major actor in bringing about the Enlightenment. A notable feature of Enlightenment thinking was objective truth, an absolute idealism. In stark contrast with more modern or present models of science, where facts are few and many are theories and paradigms, from a truly social perspective, absolute idealism prevailed, a certain standard of accepted thought. Kierkegaard was born in Denmark which at the same time was suffering from social irritants, caused by a rapid change from feudalism to capitalism, in turn caused by the spread of the Industrial Revolution. Because of this, institutions and places of education provided to students and young adults, children, presented a certain factory mold mindset. Conformity in thought and pursuance was the only acceptable course. It defeated the individual as is described by regularly edited and expanded posts by Stanford University. This was a point of dissonance for Kierkegaard. He railed against this, in a sense, a nonconformist. Kierkegaard's sentiments were fueled by a religious fervor. His father was a preacher and theologian himself. Yet still, in stark contrast with the Church and other theologians of the time, Kierkegaard understood the important and subjective experience of connecting with higher consciousness, Christ and or God. However, in his impartiality, he focused primarily in expanding the self, finding one's own truth rather than focusing on rationale to define reality. He thought that these sentiments more so destroyed the self, that literally people so focused on objective truth were simply constructions of facts and absolutes, the external filling the internal, rather than letting the self grow, the internal filling the void. Kierkegaard's thoughts were the result of provocation or dissonance from Enlightenment thinking, and one philosopher, namely George Wilhelm Hegel, Hegel's greatest achievements in thinking, defined the Enlightenment era. He asserted dialectical approaches of rationale via comparison contrast, 
or that anything can be explained by the sum of what it is as much as the sum of which it is not, which is formed from supporting evidence from both Encyclopedia Britannica and an article published by Oregon State. Kierkegaard saw no rationale in defining a reality produced by defined consciousness. which defines his terming of the leap of faith. From a Christian perspective, man is ignorant in the face of God. God constructed the reality that human exists in. Whether you consider that a test or to extend oneself by developing a connection to higher consciousness, Kierkegaard applied that in this instance, how can the ignorant make rational that which it was not constructed to understand? Or from a less theological perspective, how can something so limited provide the answers purely by constructive rationale. Again, from this perspective, science, even so branded objective, cannot be free from subjugation, nor can any thoughts about the world around us, which explains his focus on the self. From these earlier stated sentiments, it's clear the connection and effect Kierkegaard's existentialist thought had on modern and postmodern forms of thought, the most important being the transition from objective absolute thinking ideologies to a more subjective, impartial view on reality, from enlightenment to understanding. The epitome of this transition can be viewed under a certain chronology. Darwin's Origin of Species was released in 1859, four years after Kierkegaard's death. Then, in 1869, the development of the nature-nurture dispute in psychology and genetics, where the central argument was whether or not a man's identity, a man's actions, can be defined by the self, genetics, or whether a man is a product of his environment. In the Enlightenment era, it was accepted as a definitive, nurture or nature, whereas today it's accepted that it's both. I think the perspective of many prominent philosophers and scientists helped to develop this conclusion, namely Kierkegaard's being a social gadfly. He was critical, critical of people who had titles who hadn't been challenged before. I think his ideas on subjective experience may have refined the way people perceive everything, from a religious, scientific, all walks of life. Notably, Kierkegaard had many theological contributions to postmodern or progressive Christianity. The latter quote, speaking to the distinctiveness as a subjective input of God's will into all of humanity, individually. Again, Kierkegaard was no fan of the church. The church, he thought, made zombies or people looking for fire insurance, more so than people who wanted to pursue a connection with Christ, a topic I've discussed personally with my friend Megan Fansler. Progressive Christianity today focuses mostly on this item, as something that is inclusive and a subjective experience for everyone. In conclusion, Kierkegaard wanted to represent the idea that people could not themselves define reality. One cannot define the walls of the box they are contained in. It's paradoxical to make rationale out of fabrication. We are ignorant people from the fact we are limited. The world we see person to person is totally exclusive. We contain our own subjective universe. Kierkegaard thought it was major discourse to accept the idea that our thoughts, that which we know is absolute, arrogant even. He wanted to deface this representation in both the sciences and church. Truly, Kierkegaard wanted to renew passions, not only in ourselves, however, in one another, in accepting the distinctiveness of one's own self. We enlighten each other.